for being here tonight. We're competing with the Lieutenant Governor debate. Uh, and so um, what we're gonna do is a lot of our people are gonna rely on the video tonight. As soon as the video can be uploaded and posted to the website, it will be there, it will be available under the uh, elections tab on the Grassroots America website. Uh, before I get into the rules, let me give you all for the viewers at home and for those here and those who will look at uh, the video, a little bit about the Emergency Services District 2 uh, background. The existing five member boards governing Emergency Services District 1 and number 2 are volunteer positions and were appointed by county commissioners until a state law last session created single member districts to equally represent voters. The emergency services districts are defined as political subdivisions of the state of Texas, which means they are governed by state statutes as are commissioner's courts. Just as your local city council members and school board trustees are unpaid positions, the fiduciary and statutory responsibilities triggered by the oath of office are serious responsibilities and are in no way negated by their unpaid status. Emergency Services District 1 is not represented here tonight because there were no challenges for those uh, positions. But for your information, it includes the Lindale Fire Department. Its tax rate is six cents per $100 valuation. Its levy for 2012 was $639,000. Emergency Services District 2 includes Art, Bullard, Chapel Hill, Dixie, Flint, Gresham, Jackson Heights, Noonday, Red Springs, Troop, White House, and Winona Volunteer Fire Departments, although they're no longer completely volunteer fire departments because they have many paid members and they do receive tax dollars. The district was created by voters in 2007 and has levied and collected more than $4.2 million every single year since it was, um, it was instituted by the voters. And it levies these taxes on property. The district's tax rate is 8.4 cents per $100 valuation of property. The single district maps drawn for this election were drawn proportionally based on voting age population and it was approved by the Smith County Commissioner's Court. The two five member boards will be elected to four year terms. Members will draw lots to decide which three members will serve four year terms and which two will have to run again in two years to keep the terms staggered in the future. The candidates running for these positions, and by statute, they are nonpartisan races. So when people go to vote, they will go to the bottom of the ballot, and they will look for these races. In place one for Emergency Services District 2, the candidates are Sandy Haley and Paul Perryman. In place two, Charles Wilson. There is a writing candidate for place two, Anthony Bruner. Place three was unopposed, and there is no write-in. Mr. Leroy Vickers will assume that position. Place four, Robert Deere and Randy Melton, both are currently appointed members of the ESV2. Place five, Matt Thiessen and Ted Gold. Now for the rules. Candidates have been given these rules before. They've seen them before. Candidates may sit or stand to make opening and closing statements. Candidates may use paper during the debate for note taking. Candidates may not send or receive texts during the debate nor ask for assistance from campaign supporters or staff. Candidates may use charts, graphs, or appropriate props to help make their points during their closing statements. Candidates should spend time debating the topics or answering the questions as posed by the moderators. Attempts to change the subject will trigger corrective action by the moderators. And all the moderators have a lot of experience doing that. 
Candidates are welcome to invite family and friends and to bring campaign materials, and the signs must be always distributed outside the church. This is a straight Q&A format. As you well know, sometimes we use a modified Lincoln Douglas format. With these many candidates, um, it's just impractical to do that. But all three of us, myself, Ernie Clark, and Mr. Roy Maynard, our guest uh, from the Telemorning Telegraph, I think all of you all know Roy Maynard. He is the opinions editor of the Telemorning paper and has been a reporter there for a long time. Uh, the three of us will have latitude to add some time if we have a question that we believe will take a little bit more time uh, to fully answer. We will let the timekeeper, Ms. Darty and Radel, down there know that we're going to have additional time and we will let all the candidates know. All the candidates will have the same amount of time. Now, you all need to watch Ms. Darty and Radel down here because she is an expert timekeeper. She keeps the time for most of our debates and has for quite some time. So when you see her uh, raise the warning, the yellow warning, that means candidates, it's going to be soon be time for you to land the plane. And, and, and that means that you can finish a sentence, but you can't finish a paragraph. And certainly not another chapter of the book, okay? So we want to keep, um, we want to pay attention to the moderator. We don't allow things to happen here like they did in the debate last week with the governor candidate. Strict time limits will be enforced. We've already been over that. The candidates will each have two minutes for opening statements. And then each candidate will have one minute to answer each uh, question unless we give them extra time. And each candidate will have one minute for closing comments. Now, the security of the debate topics and the questions um, is extremely secure. Grassroots America never reveals debate topics or questions in advance of any debate or forum, not even to guest moderators. Candidates in this race may be eligible for endorsement by the Board of Directors of Grassroots America. It takes seven of nine board members to endorse in any particular race. Grassroots America does not endorse in every race. Sometimes we will simply recommend or we will simply not give you any indication, and when we don't give an indication, that means that the candidates did not rise to the level of either a recommendation or an endorsement. A public statement will be released after the board has had an opportunity to review the candidates and the results of the candidate forum. So don't worry, even though we have, a, I think, probably one or two board members um, that may not be here tonight. They, uh, their assignment is to watch the video before they render their decision. So with that, let me ask the candidates right now if they have any questions before we begin. Any questions? Well, thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Charles Wilson, um, 